Hello, my darlings. Madam Raven here with a wonderful surprise. Tainted Tales are back and have brought me a tale to tell you. Today I bring you The Darkness Within by Daniel Bridge. England, 1847 and Queen Victoria has settled into her reign with ease, and she resided in absolute luxury, while those around her suffered from incurable diseases and, as many suspected, far more sinister circumstances. One such person was a man named Oliver Johnson, a humble man who devoted himself wholly to the well-being of others. Oliver was a deeply religious man, and believed in all things evil as well as holy. And, eventually, at the age of thirty-seven, took his beliefs further than he ever thought possible. This decision was forced upon him after witnessing something dark and unworldly. It all began on the evening of the 23rd of June, when he walked through the marketplace in his small hometown of Rochdale. He heard a shrill scream coming from somewhere behind him. The noise disturbed him, but he continued to amble his way down the roughly cobbled street towards his simple home. During the early part of Victoria's reign, Oliver had worked as an ironmonger, traveling door to door, sharpening knives and various other household items until after the fateful day, and then his life changed forever. Gone was the drab tweed pants and oversized dirty white shirt, which were accompanied by the obligatory flat cap, only to be replaced by his best church-going suit, in immaculate black. As it was now, he began to realize his true calling. He was destined to carry out God's work and rid the world of the true evil that hid itself in plain sight. Two weeks later, he heard a rumor of a girl in a nearby township of Oldham who was displaying symptoms no one had ever witnessed before. A curious Oliver walked the seven miles between the two towns to see for himself if these stories were to be believed. Nothing could have prepared him for what greeted him when he arrived. As he entered the doorway of the room at the top of the narrow stairs, he froze. The color drained from his body, giving him an opaque gray appearance. I'll be back soon, he told the young girl's family, and with that he turned on his heels and left, shaken and shocked at the sight he had just seen. He couldn't understand how the things he had just witnessed were possible. How could deep gouges appear in solid walls, and the deep, raspy voice of the seven-year-old girl huddled in the corner, hugging her knees tight. She was shaking and sweating profusely. Her short, dark hair appeared as if glued to her head, and her fingernails were very long and black. Several days later, upon his return, Oliver entered the room of the young girl, whose name he now determined was Alice. The coldness of the room stopped him in his tracks, and as he watched his breath catch the air as he exhaled, he walked calmly towards her. He crouched down beside her and gently began to whisper to her. As he did so, she turned to face him and started to vehemently thrash her arms around, spitting at him as she slowly raised her voice until she was finally screeching at him. Unfazed by what was occurring in front of him, Oliver continued to whisper his words of incantation. The more he repeated the words, the more violent Alice became, until after several hours all seemed to be calm. Just as Oliver stood to leave the room, he caught sight of something near the window. 
realizing what he had just seen was the entity that was controlling young Alice. He decided to act, to ensure whatever it was couldn't control anyone else. He thought the best and only way to do this was to consume it himself and hope his deep faith would keep him from harm. So as the entity began to take its solid form, Oliver began to devour it. Once consumed, Oliver left happy in the knowledge that Alice was now safe. Over a period of a year, Oliver traveled the nation carrying out these acts of God's work, as he had come to call them. He called them this to help himself accept what he was starting to become. He felt that something within him was beginning to change, and he wandered around Manchester Dock area. The first sign of this was just after he left the Wellington Public House and came across several drunken traders brawling on the quayside. He began a violent stirring deep within the pit of his stomach and ended in Oliver erupting into a tirade of violence towards the crowd of men. This ended in the death of four men and serious injury of at least another six. The authorities had no explanation to the horrific killings and the events that occurred that evening. The scene was one of horror and mayhem. Various limbs had been torn from the victims and were strewn across the boardwalk. Pools of blood adorned the footpath that ran alongside the dock, which was lined with vessels which brought the traders into the country. Several hundred yards away, in a local flap house, a very confused Oliver awoke. Upon noticing the blood stains on his clothing, he panicked, wondering to himself what had happened the previous evening. As he slid his arm into his jacket and made his way to the door, he felt an uncomfortable wave of guilt flood over him. As he ambled his way through the manically bustling streets, he saw the cluster of police officers gathered by the public house. Pulling his cloth cap over his face, he ducked down one of the alleyways that ran parallel to the dock road. Oliver couldn't understand or explain what was going on within him. He just knew that something was and it wasn't good. He felt he could mostly control it, for now. But for how much longer, that was the question. And what would be the next stage of the process? How many more would die by his hand, whether he was aware or not? It was now the Monday morning that followed the incident at the docks. And Oliver began to realize what was happening to him. He believed that after consuming so many entities, they had begun to consume him. So much so that they had overtaken his face and turned him into what he most feared. Now his only question was how to rid himself of the demons inside him. The following morning, as the lamplighter shuffled through the shadows, they came across the figure of a very sorrowful Oliver, swinging by the neck in the local woodland. And with the discovery, the mystery of the Dockland slayings died alongside him. So close, this raven. And please, my darlings, if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and share Madam Raven's Tales with your friends, won't you?